We all know someone who suffers from anxiety right here, and it's time to learn how we can help people manage it. The film Anxious Nation is shining a light on the soaring number of young people struggling with anxiety. Let's take a look. School shootings, mall shootings, that's my worst fear. I think we live in a world now where you pick up your phone, it's Instagram, it's Twitter, it's TikTok. I didn't just have anxiety, I was living in it. I kind of like to think about it as genetics being the gun and the environment being the trigger. Unless we realize how we are living a pattern, we will unconsciously project these patterns onto our children. Oh my gosh, like you let your anxiety win. Wow. To tell us more about the film, New York Times bestselling author, speaker, and producer Laura Morton and supermodel turned super mogul Kathy Ireland join us live. Welcome both of you hey, to DBL. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you both for being here. This is very important stuff. So, Kathy, you're an executive producer and presenter of Anxious Nation. Why was it so important for you to be involved in this film? I cannot think of a more difficult time to be a young person, an old person, any age. We're living in unprecedented times. And Anxious Nation is the first film that, that we're aware of that is really addressing this. Laura Morton is a 21-time New York Times bestselling author. Vanessa Roth is an Academy Award-winning director. When I learned about this project that these heroes of mine were making, my question was, how can I help? how can I get involved? So presenting and executive producing this powerful film. We all love children, um, serve on boards of education, mentoring programs for decades. And what kids are going through today with anxiety, the loneliness, the isolation, if it's not addressed, we know this can lead to SUD, substance use disorder, and tragically suicide. Well, let's get into the film because Laura, you wore many hats to create this film and you are also in it with your daughter. Mm. So tell it's us about her struggles with anxiety. Hard to navigate. Well, you know, my daughter struggled with anxiety her entire life. Uh, we just didn't know that that's what she was struggling with. And, you know, I felt like I was failing her as a parent. I felt mm. com completely helpless and confused and really uncertain of what to do. And uh, in 2018, I thought what was happening in our home was only happening in our home. So I put a single post on Facebook and I asked other people, kids in anxiety, who's dealing with it? And the response was extraordinary. And, and while I got some answers all directly on Facebook, it was, the, it was the direct messages that I got and the text messages that I got from people that I'm very good friends with. And we had never talked about what's going on with our children, what was going on in our homes. And as a storyteller by trade, I just felt like there, there was something here, something that had to be addressed. Mm. And it took me a long time for a doctor to tell me that my daughter had anxiety. I had doctors telling me it was her diet, it, you know, it was normal, it was just this, it was just that, but nobody until she was around 10 years old told me that it was anxiety. Wow. You know, I can understand people being hesitant to share and DMing or texting as opposed to doing it publicly, but you and your daughter chose to be a part of this film. So what was the catalyst for you deciding to share your personal journey with everyone? Well, thank you for asking that question. It, it was actually a really, it was a dilemma for me because I, I'm also the filmmaker and I didn't want it to feel gratuitous to be in the film. But I also thought that I couldn't ask any other family to participate in this film and do something that we weren't willing to do ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think if I wanted other families to be vulnerable and raw and open, we had a responsibility to be to do the same. Wow. All right, Kathy, one of the doctors in this film shares that on average, and I want everyone to listen to this, depending on the diagnosis, parents went wait anywhere from two to eight years from the onset of symptoms until they go to a mental health professional. Why do you think America treats other health issues, broken bones, cancer, anything, with so much more urgency and seriousness? You know, despite the fact that anxiety has been around since the beginning of time, it's something that we don't talk about. Right. And it, it doesn't make sense. You know, we, we break our leg, it, something is visible. 
And there is a perceived shame and stigma, which just exasperates the isolation. And so what Anxious Nation is doing, it is shining a bright light on what millions of families are suffering through. It removes any shame, uh, any stigma, and it really sends a message that this is not your identity. This is, is not who you are, and it is something that that you can get through. You can navigate through this. And Laura and Vanessa have chronicled the lives of such a diverse group of young people and their families. The audience will find someone they relate to because it's not a one size fits all. Right. Everyone has their own unique story and their own, the own, their own unique issues that they're dealing through. That is life-saving. I was going really to say lives with I this. know. Absolutely. Laura, uh, here's the thing. I have two young kids. They're obviously not on social media. I struggle with whether I'm ever going to let them on social media. The film touches on how social use and its effects and how it can uh, create anxiety. What needs to change to make social media safe for our children? Is there a balance? Genetics. Well, I'm so glad you asked me this question because you know, pointing the finger at social media as the root cause is, is just, it's low hanging fruit, right? I think it's something that we can point to. And there's no question that social media certainly has an impact on our, our youth and, and their mental health. But I think what's more important is that we have to look at the providers of social media. We have to look at the platforms. And, and I think that they know the damage that they're doing right. and, and they're continuing to do it. In fact, they're developing out al algorithms that continue to do more harm. Every statistic we show in the film in and around social media comes from an internal study at Meta, at Facebook, mm. at, at Instagram. And it, you know, that, that tells the whole story. What I think needs to change is not necessarily holding the user accountable, but holding the provider accountable. I think they're protected under Article 230 of the Communications Defense Act, which was created in 1996. A long time ago, and that basically makes all social media platforms immune from any culpability. And I think that if we allow social media platforms to self-regulate, I think it's it's creating a mistake that we can never turn back from. Well said. Yeah, you well very said. Kathy and Laura, thank you so much for joining us on DBL today. To our viewers, you can watch Anxious Nation on May 3rd through the world premiere live stream event. Visit anxiousnation.com for more information. I cannot wait to watch this. Thank you again. Thank you. We'll be right back. Thanks for having us. Thank you.